Hey y'all, it's Kara and our surviving turkeys. And today we're gonna talk about genetic modifiers in goats, which can add to uh, giving them a nice phenotype or physical appearance. So thinking back to biology, we know that an animal's genotype is referring to the actual genes that it has, the DNA that the animal has. Whereas phenotype, Phenotype is the physical traits of an animal. So this turkey here, we can describe its phenotype because that's what we see. So this is a bronze turkey. I can tell it's a bronze turkey based on its phenotype or its coloration. So let's go look at some of the cool phenotypes we have in our goat herd. Um, just give them a little pizzazz. So before we get into all the cool colorations uh, and things that we have in our herd, I think it's really important to say that when it comes to phenotype, rather than prioritizing color, you should prioritize traits that will add to the longevity of the animal. Such as if it's a doe, you want to see a nice, well-attached udder that's not going to fall apart. and. You just want a well-built animal. So of course, prioritize that. And then colors can just be a fun add-on. So let's look at some of the fun colors in our herd. So let's start first with our boys. Let's start with Silver, who has the gold beard right now, which um, <clears throat> he has colored himself. He has the silver gene, which is dominant, and that's why he has that silver coloration. <laughs> And what that silver gene does is uh, he would otherwise be an all black animal, but the silver gene takes the hair that would be black and instead gives it a nice little silver color. And a cool thing about the silvers is they can be other patterns too. We'll see Emma in a little bit and Emma is a silver chamoise. And then little Cash here, you notice how brown he is? He has the chocolate gene, which is also dominant. And so where he would be black, he is instead a chocolatey brown color. Well, confetti is walking way away from us right now, but something that he has, though he doesn't have a coat modifier like cash and silver, confetti does have blue eyes. And unlike in humans, blue eyes are dominant in goats. So at least 50% of his offspring on average will be blue eyed. As I walk up here and find the rest of the goat herd so we can talk about them. Uh, just a little refresher from biology. Uh, dominant, if I say a gene is dominant, that just means if that allele is present, if that gene is present, it is going to show through in the phenotype. Whereas a gene that is recessive, you must have two copies of that gene, one from the mom, one from the dad, both copies of that gene in order for that to express. Because if it's a recessive gene, any other gene that's present is going to uh, mask over it at that specific locus or part of the DNA. So let's go find the others and talk about them. Okay, I found the rest of the herd up here. I want you to notice how Rocky is different from Silver. So Rocky, he does have some uh, white or grayish looking hairs, but notice how you can see that his legs are brown and he has brown on his head. With Silver's, you're not going to see that. You're gonna see a very dark, um, pigmentation on any skin that shows typically and um, it will all all the way down through the legs and on top of the head you're gonna see that silver coloration so here Emma she is our other silver the silver chamoise so she's a pretty girl she also has the blue eyes oh, Dottie hey Dottie you bring up another really cool genetic thing that we see a lot in goats, specifically Nigerian dwarfs, but 
other goats have it too. And that is called moon spotting. So look at how many pretty spots that Dottie has all over her. How many do you think there are? I, I really can't count. There's too many. <laughs> There's just too many. You're too pretty, Dottie. But these moon spots, that's just a term for these circular colored spots on an animal or especially on goats that are not white, nor are they on white. Look, even her face has one. Notice how her face is kind of brown on that one side. Dottie, can you look up so I can show you? Look, Dottie, look up, look up. That is all one super cute moon spot on her side. And that is dominant too. So Dottie here, um, if she only has one allele for moon spotting, then her kids will have a 50% chance of the moon spots um, being passed on to them. So, so cute. Oh no, the rest of the herd's running away from me. <laughs> we better go catch them quickly. Uh, let's see. Honey, honey is our beautiful gold doe who was one of the first uh, Nigerian dwarf goats that we ever got. Honey and her twin sister, Sugar, who is white and gold, walking in the middle there. They were our first Nigerian dwarfs we ever purchased. And this beautiful gold color is dominant. Look how big she is, y'all. She has not been bred yet. She's just, she's a thick girl. I don't know, I don't know. She's even still producing milk for her baby who is, uh, what, let's see, eight months old. <laughs> so I don't know how she keeps that kind of body condition, but she does. Other than that, um, there are a few other cool phenotypic things you can see. Honey and Penny here are both pulled. So if you look at the top of their head, you see kind of like a rounded shape, like a rounded M that um, is present on pulled goats, which are naturally hornless. So honey, she never grew horns. She never had to be disbudded. She is pulled, which is pretty neat and also a dominant trait. So she has, I know that she is heterozygous for that. She has one allele for pulled and one for horned because she has had both pulled and horned offspring. And we kept one of her pulled babies, actually the only pulled baby she's ever given us, which is right over here. And her name is Ice Ivory. <laughs> Let me see if I can see her. She's being kind of shy. Ice. She's giving me the cold shoulder. <laughs> Ice. Can you show me your beautiful M-shaped head? No, was that a rude question? I'm sorry. <laughs> Franklin's another one with the beautiful moon spots. His dad is Confetti Bomb. And Confetti, even though he doesn't look to have moon spots, he does under his coat. Um, it's just kind of hidden by his gold coloration. So he throws moon spots to about 50% of his kids. Aside from that, we do have a few different coat patterns in the herd. Uh, some of them are, I don't even know what you would call gazelle, honestly. She looks to have rowing. She has a lot of white throughout her coat. Um, but with her not being a purebred Nigerian dwarf or probably even a partial, I don't know what you would call this breed. I think she's a Kiko like Kiko breed of goat. And Rocky, he has that rowing as well. He's a Kiko mix too. He's a Kiko Nubian mix, the real OG on the farm. Tootsie, our Nubian. I don't know what that coat would be called either because, well, it doesn't really conform to a Nigerian dwarf coat pattern but she does have some moon spots. It's actually a golden colored spot there and she has some that are silver and that's not white. So it does count as a moon spot. Oh, and the frosted ears. I didn't mention frosted ears and white pole. Tootsie, don't run away from me. Come here. If I scratch you, will you stop? Wow, 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 wow. <sighs> Fine, Rocky will be our participant. Rocky won't mind to participate. Notice how he has a white spot on his head that's called a white pole and he has frosted ears both of which are dominant 
He's so cute. Yes, you are, Rocky. You're the you're the big big guy on the farm. Big dude, protector of the realm and so forth. So what you've probably noticed, which is pretty interesting, is most of these modifiers or these traits that show through are dominant. But one of them that doesn't, one coat pattern that is recessive is having a black coat. So here, Trixie, she has a beautiful black coat and she's always had like this wavy coat as well. And I don't know, I don't know where she got that from either, but she has this beautiful black coat. And the only way that you can get a black coat that doesn't have any overlaying coat pattern, they can still have moon spots, but to have a full black coat, you have to have a black allele passed on by both the mom and the dad. So pretty neat to see that come through with Trixie. And she's also polled and blue-eyed. She is a very pretty girl. And she's the mom of Franklin. Now you're not wanting to run away. She's like, why are they going to over there? Must be delicious. Well, y'all, thank you for joining me on this video, kind of highlighting some of the cool traits and colors that we can see in our goat herd. Hey, honey. The only, oh, I forgot to mention this one. This white overlay that you see on some of the goats, like um, Honey here has it, and you can see it on Dottie too. Uh, that is thought to be dominant also. So pretty neat to see that. <laughs> and you just never know um, what the offspring are going to look like. But with that, y'all, don't forget to like and make sure you're subscribed as we track these does after they're bred and prepare for all the goat babies. And Dottie wanted me to remind you, if you have a dream, go for it. Bye, y'all.